Hi, my name is John. Welcome to XLTV.com uh, podcast. We're doing a podcast today on full disk encryption for Linux. To illustrate that point, we're going to use Slackware 13. You see we are on the Slackware 13 disk here. I'm going to start the boot sequence for that install disk. And we're using Slackware 13 because it's an entirely manual install, which will allow you underst to understand how the Crypt Setup API works, how the LVMs work underneath, and that'll help you later on with other distributions that require more, uh, that are all more automated, so you can sort of understand what's going on and decide how you want to do it. We're going to log in as root, as that's the account that we use on this distribution to install, and we're going to do CF disk um, on this uh, install because CF disk is a more graphical install. It's might easier to follow than F disk. First thing we want to do is we want to create a new partition. We want it to be the slash boot partition. 100 megs is fine. Slash boot is the only partition that is not encrypted. Everything else is. Next, we're going to make another partition. We're going to make it the rest of the space on the drive. And the reason why we're doing this is because um, it's important to uh, create all your partitions inside a logical volume group. Uh, if you do not do that, then what ends up happening is you have to put in five or six passwords to boot up your system, which is not what we want. So now we have our disk partitioned. We need to actually encrypt that second partition because you have to, if, when you encrypt a partition, it destroys all the data on it. So it's very important that we do the encryption first, which is what we're doing right now. So to start that, we're going to use the crypt setup command, and we're going to set the key size to 256 bits. We're going to tell it yes, we want it to confirm our password. It's very important, you don't want to mistype that. We're going to use the Luke's format. Be careful, the F is capitalized there. And we're going to select that second partition. Now, it's going to ask us if we're sure, uppercase yes, this is because it will destroy all that data on that partition. We are. It's going to ask for a passphrase. I'm going to make mine simple uh, for the sake of this um, tutorial. It's going to be Linux. But your real passphrase should be somewhere around 25 characters. Make it something easy to remember. You can use uh, words that are alternating upper and lower case with some symbols thrown in and numbers to replace letters. Find something you can remember but is sufficiently long and use that. The next thing we got to do is we got to actually open the encrypted partition. So we're going to use crypt setup again. We're going to do Luke's open. And we're going to do slash dev slash hda2. And we're going to call this Slack Luke's. It's going to ask for our password. Remember, our password was Linux. It's going to accept that password and it's going to mount that, that drive. So now the drive is open to be mounted, which is good. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a physical volume using the PV create command. Physical volume is what LVM uses to store volume groups. And of course, volume groups have individual volumes inside them. So this is the basic building block of logical volumes. So we're going to do slash dev slash mapper slack loops. Now when you mount the, when you open the container, the encrypted container that is on HDA2, it automatically creates a mapper entry to it just like it does an LVM. So this is where we want to create our physical volume. Now it's telling us congratulations, the physical volume was created. Next thing we want to do is create our volume group. So we're going to use VG create. And we're going to call it crypt VG for encrypted volume group. Got to tell it where we're going to create that. Dev, mapper, and slack loops is where we're going to open it. Successfully created that. Now we've got our container. We can create our individual volumes. For the sake of this install, I'm only going to create a swap and a root partition. Um, you can create more partitions such as home, swap, user, root. Uh, which gives you some flexibility because you can choose different file systems to format it. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do LV create. We're going to do dash L. We want to set the size for this to be 512 megabytes. And we want to call it swap. And we want to make it on the crypt VG volume group. important that you tell it the name of it is swap. I forgot the dash in, that's uh, important. Now it's going to tell us that the logical volume was created. The next thing I want to do is I want to do LV create and for this one I'm going to use our root partition. 
I'm going to do a little d different here. I'm going to do a dash L lowercase and I'm going to put 100% free. This is going to use all the remaining space on that volume group. I'm going to tell it the name is root and I want to create it on crypt VG. It's going to tell root has been created. Now it's important that we do a VG scan and make the nodes. This is going to scan the sorry, it's VG scan. This is going to actually make the volume group. It's going to find the volume group. And then we want to do a VG change dash AY so it doesn't prompt. We're going to mount basically all the volume groups. So now they're active. Both the volumes in that group are active. So this is good. Now we're going to do a make swap slash dev slash crypt VG. Okay, now we're ready to go. We can type setup. Now, the first thing we want to do is add the swap in the installer. It's going to find it, swap on. The next place it's going to take us is to the actual uh, installation partition selector. It wants the slash partition first, which right here we're going to use slash root. And we're going to format that. We can use extension 3 or extension 4, it doesn't matter. We'll use extension 4 for the sake of the tutorial. The next thing we need to do is select our slash boot. We can make this ext2, it's only slash boot, we're going to call it slash boot. Okay, so now slash, slash boot is there and our root is there. And that is it for us because we only did two. So we're going to continue now to the next part of the installation and install from the CD.